1998-99, I was chair of the board of Morningside College, and we were conducting a national search for a new president. And it was a very nerve-wracking time because we knew the institution had a lot of numerous issues. And so all of us knew this was a huge decision. So I was probably the first person to even see the name John Reinders when his resume came across um, my desk. And I was probably the first to actually talk to him. And I'm the one who met him at the airport. So I have a long history with John. I started here in June of 2000, uh, at the end of John's first year as president. Uh, he had come in and had a year to get his legs under him to figure out what was going on and to begin to implement the processes for making Morningside, now University, the place that it is today. So he set up a number of task forces to study a variety of things, academics, athletics, finances, uh, all of those things. And, and from that, he and the senior staff generated the first strategic plan. And probably the only mistake we made is we named it a five-year plan. We implemented a number of those things. We moved from NCAA uh, Division II to the NAIA. Maybe the single most important thing John did for this institution. From a board's perspective, he always laid out a five-year plan. And we all found it a little amusing because we got to the third, third year, maybe the fourth year, and he was already planning for the next five-year plan. And that five-year plan was even bigger and better and more grandiose. And lo and behold, it was implemented, time frames were set, it happened, and another five-year plan was put into place. And so he just continued to have the campus exceed expectations by what it could do and the, and the people on campus that made it happen. First impressions you have when you walk on campus today versus 20 years ago. Phenomenal change. You look at the quality of students we have on campus today versus what it was when we struggled 20 years ago to find students interested in Morningside College. Now the school can be selective. You look at the quality of graduates. Those graduates become better employers, better employees first, then better employers in our community. Truly the long-term impact, the what it's brought to the image of Sioux City even. John's leadership was something I witnessed prior to Morningside. Uh, I think his leadership really goes clear back to his days at Allegheny, but not only as an administrator, but as a coach. Uh, as someone who has worked with him in the past, uh, you could always see his clear vision, but the way he brings people along, it's not just John. It's getting people to share their vision. It's getting people to feel comfortable um, giving their ideas and running with it and, and taking all of that and making it into the whole. He's really great at promoting ideas of others, of just really um, listening very well and knowing that it does take a team to really make something go. And so I think those of us who've had that um, luxury of working with John, really you take away from that the experience of Wow, he cares. I remember very early on a memory of John is that he was at every game. If I went to a game for Morningside, John was there. It didn't matter the sport. It didn't matter the time of day. He was always there. And that was really important to him. And that's actually a bit of advice that he gave to me. He said, look, as a commissioner of a conference, your time is going to be wanted and you're going to have to split yourself a lot of different directions. Don't ever underestimate the power of going to a game just for a few minutes, talking to a few people, making your presence known, but then going on to something else. And I always remember that conversation with John. That was a very impactful conversation with John because I cannot physically go to every game. I don't think he could physically go to every activity, but he does go to everything in some way, shape, or form. And I think that's very special and that's, a, that's something I think he passed down to me that I'll never forget. Well, I think what it always goes back to, and John has told me this so many times, because uh, not only am I a board member, but I'm a really dear friend of John's. He truly loves this campus. He loves, he loves Morningside. And the other thing he's told me so many times is, he loves Sioux City. And he'll say, I just love this town. 
And uh, I think that just speaks volumes when you have a college president love the institution but love the entire surrounding community. And he will just go to bat time and time again for the Siouxland community and the institution. And he's served on so many boards over the years. Everybody in Sioux City knows who John Reinders is. He truly, in all my years of work, time in the community, he's truly one of the most transformational, inspirational, and bold leaders I've ever known. And whether that's in education or in the business community or government, he is truly a remarkable leader. So he's been, what he's done here at the college, and the impact it has on our greater community has been remarkable, and that's because of his bold leadership. I think John receiving the Deming Award goes beyond just his work as the president here at Morningside. It goes into his involvement in the community, which has been tremendous. He is a community leader, and he knew from the very beginning that he could not just be the president of Morningside, he had to be a leader within the community and that meant being involved in a lot of different aspects of Sioux City, and he has done that and continues to do that. That's something that I think this city should be very proud of, to have a college president, as tenured as John is, as long as he's been here, to continue to be active at the level he's been active is very incredible, honestly, that they, he could continue to do that year after year. That's it, and he has hit it out of the park. If we're talking about athletics, he's hit it out of the park very deserving of this award.